Hello, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about updating quantities of our shopping cart. So in order to update quantities, you've got to be able to initialize your cart, add items to your cart, and display your cart. We're going to talk about what it takes to update quantities from your cart. Um, so there's going to be a little bit of overhead here. It's interesting because in principle, there's really not a whole lot that separates this from adding items, but uh, there's a little legwork I got to do. So First off, I mean, this is my cart, but really what I need to do is I need to make that an editable field, right? So what if you want zero or what if you want, uh, what if you want to make it three? All right, so that's going to be where we're going to start. And, you know, maybe you could even say this is going to be the most painful part of it. So, um, you see that quantity right there? It's not clear that that's a quantity, but that is the quantity. And remember, we so for each, we got a key, we got a val. If you're just jumping in at this point, oh, I recommend you look at the previous video about uh, displaying the cart. So basically, this needs to be a text box. It's kind of sort of how this goes. And really, a text box that doesn't have a form associated with it doesn't do any good for us. So you see, I'm taking what was a very simple CTD, and I'm going to turn it into a form. So form, right, and begins here, ends here, right? Because we got to, so every one of these, uh, every item in the cart is going to be an individual form. Now, forms need actions and they need methods. So my action is going to be this page. So view demo.php. Now, normally I do like the server PHP self thing, but... Given that I'm just working in this big echo here, I'm just going to hard code it in. I don't love that, but it's what I'm doing. And I'm going to say method is get. If you don't specify a method, it's going to default to get. So really, I'm, I don't know, just, just telling you what I'm thinking here. So there's my form. And this val needs to be an input, kind of. So an input is a void tag, meaning it doesn't have an opening and a closing. It has a value. And its value is val. I'll show you what that looks like in a second here. So we're not done, but I do want to show you what this looks like, just so you can kind of get a feel for what we're doing. So I'm hoping that this is now going to be a form, and that's going to be an input, and now it's an input. Now, you might say something like, that is really ridiculous looking. Why is it as wide as the TD? I don't care. If you want to write CSS to make it smaller, go ahead, right? No, I don't think they probably need the ability to see an entire like 15 digit number, but I'm not trying to talk about formatting right here. So the way this works, uh, so there's that. You're also going to need a way to, some, some kind of way you can uh, make this thing submit. So that's going to be an input of type submit. Now realize I'm not actually where I'm pretending that I'm further than I am. I'm just showing, I'm just doing that, just showing you kind of the, what we're going for and then I'll make it functional, right? If you don't like that it's split across two, uh, two rows within a row, well, you could solve that by making that input smaller. Now here's the thing. So that is kind of sort of the idea, but it's not gonna work quite right. Let me indent that because I don't like having things that are inside of things not indented. So if you wanna get any use at all out of this input, it's gonna need a name. Because when you pass something via the get method, you're going to access it via the name. You don't need an ID, right? An ID would be useful for CSS or JavaScript, but uh, that's kind of all we need. Now here's the deal. Let's say that I want to update that quantity from 1 to 7 or 7 to 3. You can see how I'm going to be passing the quantity. What's less clear is how I'm going to be passing the ID. So you need to know what item it is that you're updating. And so that's going to be another input. But this is the kind of input that we don't want to display on the screen. So it's just information we want to pass. So I'm going to say it's of type hidden. And it has a value of um, whatever the quan is. Uh, sorry, uh, um, sorry, it's the ID, which here is the key. All right, so the key is the ID, the val is the quan. So uh, just like before, that's, that's great that it's type hidden. That's kind of what we need here. Uh, the value is probably right, but it's also going to need a name. Otherwise, you're not going to get anything out of it. I'm going to call it PID. 
Sorry, my email's blowing up in the other window and I'm not gonna edit that out. So here's my form. Now my form is complete. It's got an action, it's got a method. We're passing a value. Uh, we're sorry, we're passing a quantity and we're passing a, a product ID. The product ID is hidden because users aren't gonna edit that and they don't need to see that. The value is certainly displayed because they are certainly gonna need to see that and uh, modify that. So that's what our form looks like. So now, when I, if you look up here at the URL, um, let's say I do 10 for this first item, I press submit, and I just wanna show you what the URL looks like. So you can see there's that quantum being passed, and there's that PID being passed. So we're gonna use PHP to grab those things and update the quantity. Now the quantity here is gonna be an awful lot like it was for a buy, so that means that this is gonna take a little bit of time. So just remember the names of our fields. We've got may, uh, we've got quan and pid. Here's where we initialize our cart. Now up here is where we need to detect whether the uh, cart has been submitted or not. And so I'm a little bit torn at this point because I've done this before. And I know that what we're gonna do is almost exactly the same as it was when we added an item to our cart. And so I could copy and paste that and probably talk about it at length and get done with this video in 10 minutes or I can write it all from scratch. And I honestly don't know what the right thing to do is. I guess at the point where you've watched this much, you might as well watch me write the whole thing again. No harm in that. So I'll do what I did before, which is an is set. So if is set dollar sign underscore get, pick one of the fields. I'm gonna look for the PID. You could look for the quan, it doesn't matter. All you're really using this for is to detect whether the form was submitted or not. Because every time you go to view the cart, you're not necessarily updating something. Well, you're not. The first time you view the cart, you're just viewing the cart. But in the event that you submit one of those subforms or forms, uh, then you're gonna pass this is set. So I'll call this is set. And in here, we're gonna create some variables which represent the things that we want. So PID equals dollar sign underscore get. If you're wondering why do I do this? Well, you don't have to do this. I just hate writing dollar sign underscore get and square bracket something. So I'd rather just write it once here, especially because I know that I can duplicate this and then just flip that to quan. So yes, it is pretty painful the first time you write this out but it was also painful when I wrote it there. And, and, and the more things you're fetching, the more you can get out of duplication. So now I've got a PID, I've got a quan, and now I'm gonna jump through the same set of hoops that I jumped through before. And you know, I just rambled about not copying and pasting things. You might recall that that initial if was actually kind of painful because it had some uh, validation in it, like that. I'm taking that line from my add item to cart. I'll sit here and stare at it for a minute because I'm it might make you feel better. Because I know I just said that I was gonna write this whole thing and I didn't. Um, if malid quan. Right, so this kicks us into, so if you watch the video on adding items, there's three cases. Now when I say three cases, I mean there's three cases for what they're gonna put there. They're gonna put uh, an integer that's greater than zero, like one or two or three, right? Adding, subtracting items, doesn't matter. That's case one. Case two is they put a zero in there, which is kind of interesting. So if they put a zero in there, that's like removing the item from their cart. And that is kind of the unique situation. And the third case is they put in a ridiculous number like baseball, right? I mean, you can't buy baseball of something or W, right? Or, or even a fractional value. I don't think that makes sense either. So you got bad input, you got updating the quantity, and you got removing the item from the cart. Those are our three cases, and we're gonna flesh those out right here. So this mess right here is saying, hey, if quan is greater than zero, which means you're simply updating the quantity, and that thing is an integer, right? That's what I really didn't wanna write twice. Then uh, that means we're gonna just update the quantity. That's, that's what we're doing. Um, and the else is gonna be bad input. Now, if, when I did this on the buy end, I decided I wasn't gonna be a hack. Today I am gonna be a hack. And by be a hack, I mean I'm just gonna echo out bad input right here. Does that help the user? No, it doesn't. 
Is that an appropriate place to display output on a page? No, it's not. But uh, those are things that you can deal with uh, on your on your own because it just adds an, another minute to a video, which is probably going to be pushing 15 minutes. All right, so I always call this case three. It's the bad input case. Now there was actually two good input cases. So that means, right, when when you've got two, one of two directions you're going to go, that means we're in the land of an if else statement. So if uh, you know quan zero is kind of what I'm looking for. So all right, like I said, you're either removing the item from your cart or you're updating the quantity. Let's deal with updating the quantity first. So if uh, if quan is greater than zero, then that means we're updating, and so that's going to be dollar sign underscore session. And uh, remember, our cart's called cart. And the quantity that you want to update is going to correspond to the thing in index position PID, right? So if we're talking item one, that's a one. If it's item two, that's a two. And we're just going to simply set that to quan, right? That's what an update looks like. We're not adding to it. We're just setting it. Now, I have seen carts where there's like a little arrow or something where you can add an item. That'd be a little different, but it's the same in principle. Now the other, the, now the, the interesting one is this right here. If, uh, if that item is zero, all right, so greater than or equal to zero, I guess is the way I'm doing this. I, right, this the, writing code is improvisational. I didn't mean to go the path I'm going on, but well, I just went down that path, so let's deal with it. So the way this was set up a minute ago, it was going to ignore zeros. But since I've done what I'm doing, let's make it work. So the only allowable things are going to be integers, either zero or a positive number. Those non-zero positive numbers are that case. Uh, this else is going to, there's only one way you get into this else. And that is by the quantity being equal to zero. I already feel like I sh could have done this better, but uh, th this whole thing has just been one take. Uh, so if you want to know how do I get something out of my cart, I'm going to say unset. So unset is a function which you can use to remove a key from an array. Uh, so I'm going to unset session. Dollar, I know I forgot the underscore. I'm coming back. Don't worry. I'm not going to leave that one there. Uh, that would destroy the whole cart. I don't want to destroy the whole cart. The only thing I want to destroy is... Uh, the index which corresponds to the thing that you just added zero of. All right, so we got bad input if it doesn't pass this, and then this goes one of two ways. Either that thing is a zero, and we unset that index from the array, or it's not a zero, and we simply update it. Uh, my timer just said 13 minutes, and I think this is gonna work. So let's see if it works. So I'm gonna update that to seven. And it looks like it's seven. Uh, I'm gonna put a W in there, and hopefully it doesn't get updated to W, and hopefully I see an error message up there, and I do. And let me show you what a zero looks like, because it's not initially clear why you need a different case for that. But I go here. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, that got caught in bad input. Uh, I didn't expect that. Like I said, this has been a one take. Um, that means Quan is not passing that. And after 30 seconds of uh, Google searching, I now know why it's failing that. So I guess filter var is going to kick back a uh, false if, uh, if it's a zero. So this whole thing, that's more accurate. Now, Part of me is like, oh, should I edit the video? Should I do this again? Uh, no, nah, I don't feel like doing it again. Uh, instead, I'll just show you how I deal with a mistake. So this else here, this is an unreachable case. So I'm going to cut that, and it's just a matter of placing it somewhere else. And then, so this if, well, you know, since there's no else, well, I guess this whole thing is just, just that. I guess. I think this will work. I know, I know people like to watch me scramble and fix my code. So I'm just telling you, I don't think there's any way to get in here with a zero value. So so this is so it just makes this part a little uh, more complicated. So right, rather than have it there, I'm just going to do this. So rather than get it, you know, I'm just going to make my three cases here. So 
else if, and this is actually certainly easier. You could actually see me scrambling uh, before I went off on this mission to try and fix this. Because um, I was like, oh, you could see. Remember I added the equals sign? So anyways, I think that's going to be case one. This is going to be case two. And this is going to be that unset that I just copy or I just cut. So it's going to be unset, dollar sign underscore session, uh, cart. And the PID is the thing that we want to uh, unset. No big deal, right? It was just a matter of shuffling things around. So that's always the downside to using built-in functions is you better understand how they work. And I didn't start using this function until like two days ago. I just did a Google search and people said, oh, this is a good thing to use for val, right? Because there's many ways that you can validate uh, whether something's an integer or not. So either uh, it's a positive integer and you do that, or uh, it's zero and we unset, or it's bad input. Now let's give this a test run and see how it goes. So um, 11, uh, let me, so that worked. Let me test some things, that worked. Now let's see if zero actually removes it from my cart, and it did. And so do you see how you wouldn't actually want to display, you know, that some, you had zero of something? Because essentially you have zero of everything on this site that isn't already in your cart. So you don't want to do that. So I put a zero here and it unsets. And now you see we're removing items from our cart. You could remove, I guess, we might as well remove them all, I, I guess. I mean, I don't really know what why I'm doing this, but just want to show you at some point your cart becomes empty and, and that's how you update quantities in your cart. So you might notice the thing that I was tripping over a little bit was that zero, because that's kind of the, the interesting case where you're actually removing indices from your array uh, but at this point, I think I've covered in a fair amount of detail what it looks like to both remove and uh, update, right, remove items from your car cart, which is really just a fancy way of updating an item from your cart with a quantity of zero. So that's how you build a shopping cart, the easy way, uh, using sessions and PHP. So uh, sorry for some mistakes here. I think it's fitting to put one in the last video because at the point where you've tolerated like 40 minutes of this, I don't see what, you know, three minutes of troubleshooting probably adds to the problems. So uh, thanks for watching. And uh, if you enjoyed, let me know. If you would like me to clean up those kind of mistakes, it's an easy enough thing to do, but uh, I like to leave them in there, I think, if we can, if we can stand it. So thanks for watching.